everyone. Great to, great to have you here. So just before I get started, uh, my focus is building these machine learning in AI systems. Um, and we, we work, obviously models are a critical part of this, but it's not just models. So hands up, how many of you have built models here? OK, pretty much everybody, wonderful. How many of you have uh, put these models into production? And OK, fewer people, but still some. So what I'd like to do is to talk about what it takes to put these models into production and sort of our thinking at Freshworks about how we go about doing this and some of the key challenges and concerns. And uh, hopefully, if I have enough time, I may not, uh, to talk about some of the architecture of these systems. And then I'm happy uh, afterwards to take any questions, and I'll hang out for a bit if you have any questions. So yeah, feel free to ask me. Right. So at Freshworks, so we are a SaaS company. We have raised quite a bit of funding, and we have 250,000 customers across you know, 120 plus countries, pretty much all over the globe, in North America, in Europe, in Australia. We have a number of customers in India, in the Middle East, in Africa as well. Right? So we have 12 global offices. All this is preamble, right? But um, so what I wanted to talk about is that we have a pretty diverse set of products, right? So we've organized, I've organized this in two rows. So we have two major themes in the company. We, were, we, fo we started off as a customer support help desk. Uh, that's Freshdesk right on the left. And then we diversified into a number of other uh, products that focus either on customer engagement, how you interact with your customers, or employee engagement, how your employees interact with internal tools. So we have Freshdesk and Fresh, uh, Fresh Sales, which are our uh, help desk and CRM. There's chat. There is marketing, um, contact center, and uh, sort of churn and retention. And then on the employee engagement side, we have Fresh Service, which is an ITSM tool. We have Fresh Release, which is for uh, bugs and software tracking. And then we have an HRMS called uh, Fresh Team for managing recruitment and employee uh, various aspects of employees, including payroll and things like that. So I'm going to be talking about examples from the customer engagement uh, world in Fresh Desk and Fresh Sales, the top two on the left, the green and the orange, I guess. And yeah, so what are the considerations that go into building out ML? So my team, and we have a couple of teams within the company that build out these ML solutions for our product line. And we have to keep several things, uh, several things in mind, right? So we're building these out for 250,000 customers. So we have a lot of diversity in who our customers are. They're in various verticals. We have insurance, finance, travel, logistics, etc. So the reason this is important to keep in mind is that because of this diversity, what you do for one customer may not work for another customer. What someone does in logistics is unlikely to apply in banking, and what someone does in travel is unlikely to apply in finance. So let's keep that in mind. Right? So each customer, even within a vertical, it's likely that, that a business will use one term to refer to something, and a different business will use an entirely different term to, you, uh, to refer to the same thing. So it's, so it's often that you won't even be able to make sense just at a very superficial level of what these two people are saying, even though they're referring to the same concept. They're just going to be using different terms and using it in different ways. And then across industries, you're going to have fairly different vocabulary. The jargon's going to be different. Technical terms are going to be different. If you just look within, say, as an example, between machine learning and statistics, often the same concept has two very different names, and it's not very hard to make, uh, not very easy to make sense of what the other party is saying. So this is something we have to keep in mind as well. Right? The the third thing is that because we are dealing with uh, business data and end customer data, right? So if you're if you are a customer of Freshdesk, then you're trusting us with your data, and you want us to keep it safe, secure, and not just allow it to go out anywhere. So we have to keep that in mind. And so as a result of this, we have several challenges, right? So we have diversity, uniqueness, and security, right? So the challenges that these present are there's multi-tenancy, right? So we're working on AWS. We're on the cloud entirely, we've, and we've been there since day one. Every ML feature that we build has to scale and work for thousands of customers. It's not just that we can build, build it once and deploy it. It has to work for every customer all the time and for all their end customers as well. So anything that we do has to operate at that scale. Now, this is not the same scale as, say, 
obviously, as any of the big fang companies in terms of how much they're processing, but it's a different kind of scale in terms of like how diverse each solution is, right? So the second thing is that we have to focus on interpretability, right? Often, and we were just discussing it, uh, I was just discussing it with Guru just before this, sometimes we're going to move into an ML-first world where a lot of things that we see are predictions, right? And once you see predictions, there's often an element of how did this come about, right? It's a little mystifying, it's a little magical. So we can't just make predictions, we also have to explain them, right? So this is something that we are, we are starting to focus on a lot, right? And the third thing is that because we have customers across the globe, we have a, a majority of our customers are, of course, in English, but we also have Dutch, French, German, Portuguese, Spanish, and um, maybe not as many customers, but we have customers whose primary language is Chinese, others whose primary language is Arabic. So you have a lot of different languages and character sets that we have to handle, right? So, and a fourth thing that, uh, and before I get into the case study, the fourth thing that I want to mention is that often we have to build one model or solution per customer or account in our parlance, that, and that has to be entirely separate from what we do for another one. The reason for this partly is diversity. The other reason is, is that we have to keep it secure. So we don't want um, information necessarily being shared between customers because that may not be okay with them. All right. So I'm going to take you through two case studies. The first case study is on predictive lead scoring from our CRM product, and the second case study is on automatic support ticket routing from our help desk product. So, in Fresh Sales, sales teams use the Fresh Sales RCRM, which is we like to bill ourselves as a Salesforce competitor, to manage their deal pipelines. Right. So, what? This is what a typical sales funnel looks like. So, you know, you have a large number of prospective customers that you could be talking to, but over time, that's going to narrow and narrow and narrow, and eventually you're going to win some of those deals, right? So what we wanted to, so, like, you might have someone who has, you know, the bare level of interest. They've just come to your website, and they've checked out a couple of things. And then once you start engaging with them, some people will say, no, I'm not interested, and go away. Others will continue with the process, and at each stage, there's going to be a little bit of drop-off, right? So eventually, hopefully, hopefully you all win a large number of your customers and make a lot of money, but that's, it's going to be only a small portion of the overall, right? So what we want to do is to help these help us help sales teams that use fresh sales increase their velocity, right? What if we could use machine learning to optimize which deals close and help people understand which deals to focus on? So we want to be able to rank them, so use historical data, uh, deals that have been closed and that you've won, deals that have been closed and that you didn't win, and study conversations that have been taking place between a sales agent and a prospective customer to understand the probability of closure, right? How likely is this deal going to actually close and win us you know, $100,000 or a million dollars or some number like that? The second thing is we want to be able to bucket them, right? Often a machine learning model is going to spit out a probability, right? It's going to say this deal has a 73% it has a 73 chance of closing or a P equals 0.73. But often this is not very informative, right? Like if I told you that a deal had was 0.73, then it's not very clear what to make, how to make sense of it. Ranking helps because you can say that, okay, a deal with 0.87 is above 0.73, but still that's not that much information. Right? So what we want to do next is not only rank them, but also bucket them as, is this deal likely to close? Is this, has, have the conversations for this deal been trending upwards? You know? Is this deal at risk? Is, does the prospect look like they're not, not showing interest? And which ones have gone cold and are unlikely to come back? Right? So there's ranking and categorization. The third thing is prioritization. Right? So at any given point, a sales agent can engage with a customer in a number of a number of different ways. You can have emails, and I mean, in just in the past week, because I attended uh, reInvent in December, I've been getting at least 20, 20 emails from various companies trying to reach out to me. Most of them I don't have an interest in. You know, I, I went to their booth and signed up because I wanted to have a chat with them, but I'm not likely to take anything. Right? So. Yeah, they can reach out to me by email, they can set up a demo, they can set up a call, they can set up something with, their, with the sales engineer. Um, but we don't know what the best action is. Right? So what we're going to do is to try and suggest which action is best for them. All right? So 
uh, this is just a flavor of our thinking around machine learning and how we do it. So this is sort of the experience within the product, right? So you see that there's four different colors, red, orange, blue, and green. The green ones, are the, and on the, the two axes are the probability that you'll win this deal going from zero to 100, and the deal age, you know, how long has this deal been going on? So you can see deals that have low probability that are off, that have been going on for say, a couple of months are uh, are likely to be at risk. Deals that have a uh, that are um, sort of in the uh, in in orange, where you have you know they're not too old, not too young, and you have a reasonably high probability they're trending upwards. And the ones in green are the ones that are likely to close because they have a high probability of winning, and they're in the right age range for how long it takes you to close the deal. So this is what the UI looks like. We hide a lot of the machine learning workloads in the back end. And I'm going to show you that. But this is what the experience will be to a sales agent or to a sales administrator, so that they get an under, they get an intuitive view of what it means to close the uh, to close this deal. Right. So. We have two different workflows for this, right? We train models on a per customer basis. And we not only train models, we also have to serve predictions from them in near real time. And I'll, say, and I'll explain why near real time in a second. Right? So OK, I'm gonna, I know this might look a little complex, but I'm going to break it down. So we have uh, a relational data store within the product that has all these, this information about deals, leads, contacts, and every uh, emails, conversations, all these things that have been going on between a sales agent and a prospective customer. Right? So we pull a lot of that data in. So this is an offline workflow for building models. We're using, like I said, we're entirely on the cloud. We're using, we're using uh, Lambdas. We're using AWS Step Function. And we're using SageMaker, which is, which is really cool. I really love using SageMaker. SageMaker has made our lives really easy. Right? So we pull in all this data. We have a custom ETL pipeline that, is trigger, that has a time-based trigger. Uh, every, I believe, every few days or so, we, pu we pull this data in. We have an ETL pipeline that stores um, all of our data in S3. And those CSVs, we read them back into SageMaker, which, does, uh, uh, which, which has a pre-processing container that we have registered in ECR, the Elastic Container Repository uh, or Registry. And once we pre-processed it and made it into a format that we can, we, can, we can use, we write it back to S3. So S3 is the sort of back end for our entire workflow, which is where all our data lives. And we have these multiple steps so that we can keep track of which data goes where. And if there's a problem, we can come back to it and see at which stage the problem happened. Right, so we write the data back to S3, the pre-processed data. And then it's read back into SageMaker. And it runs through something called a training job, which also has a custom container. There are a number, number of model building scripts there. And the once those models are built, they're written back to S3. So at this point, the entire model wor workflow is complete. And if you notice, it says step function. So step function allows you to just trigger things one after another. First, it runs the ETL. Once the ETL is done, it's going to run the pre-processing step. Once that's done, it's going to run the model training step. Right? So this is an offline workflow. This happens every couple of days. And once these models are built and stored in S3, we can go to the online workflow. Now, the online workflow, just to set a little bit of context, is when Deals are happening on a daily basis. You know, there's new information coming in. A prospect sends you an email. They're going to, you're going to respond to it. They're, they're going to check out something on your website, maybe download a white paper or check out a, web, check out a webinar. All those activities are captured in our database. Right? So those are, again, pulled into our ETL. They stored, then stored in S3. They're grouped so that we have equal size training jobs that we can use in SageMaker. These are then pulled into SageMaker and pre-processed, written back to S3, and then pulled back into SageMaker. And as I mentioned, the reason for this is so that we can trace our entire step. And here, they are the models that we, we built in the previous step. We are going to run the data through those models and store those predictions back. Once we have those predictions, we send them to our database, and then they are visualized in the UI, as I showed you there. Right? So this is our model workflow for 
uh, for the uh, lead scoring. I only have about 30 seconds, so I'm going to go through this other thing pretty quickly. So, so the, the other part that we've been working on is using machine learning to automatically, automatically route support tickets. So I have this Fitbit, wa Fitbit watch that I bought a few months ago. Now let's say it didn't work and I wrote to support at Fitbit.com and I said that, hey, I'm having a problem with my watch, I want a refund, right? Or I want my money back. Now, let's say they have some custom rules that they say that if someone says, they want a refund, assign it to the billing group and give it an urgent priority, right? They, at that point, the, the rule works, but the minute the, um, uh, the rule, I say I want my money back, that rule may not work. So how can we use ma machine learning to automate this process of getting tickets to the right sales agent? So um, these are the ca concerns that, uh, that an administrator might have. How do you route this? How do you categorize this? And how do you prioritize this? So that we, are, we get the right support agents working on something, and they're working on the most high priority things. So we wanted to reduce our ticket assignment times and resolution times so that we could set context for the agents. And so this is what it looks like. So this is a support email uh, that, that someone might send. And this is where we have that lightning icon with the number three we offer predictions, and they can apply those predictions and uh, do this. So I'm out of time, I don't wanna hold up the next speaker. Uh, so, but if you have any questions, I'll be back on stage, and then I'll be hanging around for a bit. So please feel free to ask me any questions. Thank you everyone, great to be here.